Hello, it's Scott Manley here. In the last 24 hours, we have seen the culmination of two ambitious small lunar missions. This is telemetry from JAXA's SLIM, the smart lander for investigating the moon. And it soft landed successfully on the moon. However, afterwards, it appears that it may have rolled and not assumed its correct landing orientation. And as a result, it's not getting power to its solar panels. So if you look over to the right, it appears as if the orientation of the spacecraft ends up in a flamey end up orientation, as some people like to say. And so right away, congratulations to Japan for being the fifth nation to successfully put a lander on the surface of the moon. Good job. However, it's very clear that the power is slowly draining from the lander. And at this point, you can't go off and celebrate. You're going to have to actually work your asses off until you get all the data out of that thing and it finally goes to sleep. So rewinding, about four months ago, the spacecraft launched from Tanegashima Space Center on board an H2 rocket. It was paired with the uh, XRISM to Space Telescope, which is an X-ray spectrographic you know, capable te telescope. Now from there, it had to go into a long, low energy orbit to bring it towards the moon. This is one of those fancy astrodynamic techniques where the spacecraft goes out to one of the Sun-Earth Lagrange points and while it's balanced there, it brings its orbit up, it then falls back towards the Moon and enters lunar orbit. While it was orbiting, it uh, produced some images off the lunar surface. These were mainly engineering images that were supposed to test that the hardware on board would work once it got to the surface of the moon. And, hey, I mean, it's really, you know, PR value to show what the surface looks like. So after several months in space and finally getting to orbit the moon, it begins its braking burn. It approaches the landing site from the south. And uh, if during various points in the landing, it would rotate into a position which would allow it to scan the surface and then continue its burn. It would stop at like five kilometers, 500 meters, down to 50 meters. It would do uh, a landing scan to find the point where it was supposed to land safely and then target towards that. And finally, just before landing, it was supposed to re uh, release its two rovers, LEV-1 and LEV-2. And finally, it lands on its side. It's supposed to induce a bit of rotation just before touchdown so that it gracefully folds onto those wheels. But clearly, that's not what happened in this case. Now, the rovers, those are both out on the surface. They, of course, have limited lifespan on their own. We've got a little hopper, LEV-1, and that is able to... Um, you, that is able to communicate directly with Earth. The other one is this little spherical boy that can roll around. Okay, so the landing site is uh, round about here. There is a crater called Theopolis just to the north. And it's really hard to tell from this map on Google Moon. But if I uh, hit, I think it's shift, yep, I can bring this down. You can see there's a bit of a slope there. Right now, they wanted to have terrain that was kind of sloping. So there's about a 10 degree slope at this particular location. And that necessitated some, uh, well, a slightly different landing technique than most spacecraft use. And so that's presumably how they arrived at this technique of, as it gets very close to the surface, it induces some pitch or attitude uh, with the RCS thrusters, and then sort of hopefully gently wobbles back and forth on those feet. So now, can we figure out the orientation of the spacecraft based upon the fantastic telemetry display they offered? So the spacecraft is approaching from the south. The slope is actually sloping kind of downwards to the south. And remember, they intentionally land close to lunar dawn, which means the sun is in the east. And so in the display, you can actually see that the solar panels are aligned to the east. But as it gets closer to the surface, it performs this rotation. So watch on the right side, there's this rotation attitude adjustment as the solar panels are now sort of turned over to the south side of the vehicle. So based on the understanding of this orientation, the X display on the left that is looking southwards with negative X going east and positive X going uh, west. And the Y display is looking eastwards with a negative Y going north and positive Y going south. So again, I'm running this at about four times normal speed, but you'll notice that it's pausing at different altitudes to assess the surface of the, you know, the landing area and make decisions about where it's actually going to touch down. 
Even although the moon is only one and a quarter light seconds away, there's enough of a delay there that you want this to be entirely autonomous. Other things to note is, like at the bottom of the screen, you've got the two uh, throttle meters showing how, how, you know, how much power is being delivered to the main engines. You've got 12 RCS thrusters being used. There are three rotation meters, omega Y, omega Z, and omega X, showing the attitude and the rotations, and that is going to be critical. But I'm guessing the spacecraft only has uh, gyros that measure the rate rather than the actual orientation, so it's having to add up these small rotations to figure out the orientation. But one thing I noticed, by the way, is that it's coming down slightly off angle. And that could well be that it's doing that to null out some lateral velocity that it's detected. Because you absolutely want this thing to hit with zero lateral velocity and the exact rotation that you have planned for so that it you know, assumes the correct position after uh, settling. And yeah, from this display, it's not really clear what zero altitude is. So based on this telemetry, can we figure out whether the rotation was uh, you know, correct? So we're going to expect a pitch over maneuver just before it touches down. And we don't really see that. What we see is a three degree pitch and a minus four degree yaw. And yeah, this is a freeze frame, but the actual telemetry freezes for a good few seconds here. And that's not entirely unexpected when the spacecraft is rotating and the antenna patterns are pointing in different directions. It's, we expected a loss of telemetry as soon as it touched down. Measuring the video stream, I see about eight seconds of no telemetry. And then the next thing we see is this. The yaw and the pitch rates are now off the scale here. There is a bit of a roll and you can see the thrusters are trying to compensate for all these three rotations. So I think the spacecraft came down and touched the surface before it performed the powered pitch over maneuver for the actual landing orientation. Also, I think the direction of the yaw is consistent with the spacecraft moving eastwards across the surface, which is what would have happened based upon its uh, thruster orientation during final descent. Of course, this is all based on public telemetry, which could be wrong. Also, summing sequential rotations from rate gyros is prone to error, but if this is something we can trust hypothetically, that would mean the solar panels are pointed away from the sun, they're pointed westwards, and that would explain why the spacecraft is slowly losing power. But it does offer some hope, because if this attitude is correct and the spacecraft is pointed flamey end up with the solar panels towards the west, that means that the sun will eventually illuminate those solar panels, perhaps in a week or even less, and then we might have the spacecraft come back to life in some way, perhaps be able to get some imagery. And, uh, you know, of course, we also have the rovers on the surface, which should be able to hop around and do their thing independently and maybe get some images to confirm this. So I'm looking forward to seeing some images coming out of this. Again, I consider this whole thing to be a massive success for Japan. Great work. So while we're here talking about lunar landers, I think we should also talk about Peregrine. Astrobotics Peregrine lander launched on the Vulcan rocket. The rocket was a massive success. It successfully delivered the payloads to the correct orbit. Unfortunately, as you probably heard, the spacecraft encountered some problems soon after it started lighting up its engine. By the sound of things, there was a helium pressurant valve which opened to pressurize the tanks and it did not close and somewhere in the system that resulted in the pressure increasing too much there was a break and that meant that there was a propellant leak and this propellant leak subsequently caused the spacecraft to start spinning soon after separation they were worried that they were going to run out of power now they managed to uh, orient the spacecraft correctly given this uh, limited performance they, of course, at that point, ruled out a moon landing. And then over the next few days, they progressively got more control. The leak abated, but the sort of the small impulse from that leak over time was pushing the peri G of the orbit downwards and the spacecraft was going to return into to Earth's atmosphere. So there was some great communication from Astrobotic. Everybody was rooting for this mission. We, we were seeing things go up. We were seeing the problems get fixed. The, while they weren't going to make it to the moon, they did make a point of trying to activate the payloads and those which were able to collect data in deep space. They actually got some data back from that. And while they did demonstrate the ability to maneuver the spacecraft, even with a limited propellant available and the leak, 
uh, it was decided that they would drop the spacecraft into the atmosphere. They weren't going to kick it around and leave it fly off into deep space. And they ended up re-entering, you know, just, uh, well, thousands of kilometers east of Australia. I haven't seen any imagery of the re-entry. It is a long way from land, so we don't expect it. But we did see some telescope images from S2A Systems, who work on space domain awareness, showing the spacecraft descending and uh, venting or possibly firing its engine. I think it would make sense for them to fire the engine and reduce the amount of propellant on board as much as possible, because that would uh, reduce the mass, reduce the ballistic coefficient, and make sure that it burns up. Uh, it's more likely to burn up instead of leaving pieces landing on the surface. Astrobotic also shared this really nice image of uh, the Earth as viewed from the spacecraft with the sun carefully, uh, well, the spacecraft carefully maneuvered so that the sun was blocked behind that strut so that we could actually see the, uh, cr you know, the crescent of the Earth. So if you like these missions, then you are in for a treat this year because we are looking forward to a bumper year of lunar landers. We are going to have Intuitive Machines launching their Nova C in May. There's going to be another one uh, later in the year. We're expecting Blue Ghost, Viper. There is a whole lot of NASA commercial lunar payload services you know, missions going to the lunar surface this year, and hopefully some more of them will succeed. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.